awesome. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we are back here with David and his A600 helicopter here, and it's gonna give us a really cool tour of the of this chopper. So, David, talk to me about this baby, man. So this kit is uh, an experimental home built by Rotorway, <clears throat> and uh, the A600 is their latest version of their helicopter. They've been around about 50 years, and uh, <clears throat> this took me about. 500 hours, a year and a half, two years to get together. Oh, wow. So, awesome. The best kits you can get for helicopter. Awesome. Is there, I like the paint job on it. You've got gray up top and then <laughs> white. And I see some, I don't know if that's lime green or what would you call that green there? It's just a neon green. Neon a green. Like, yeah. It looks yeah. really neat. And you've got that in the interior as well. <laughs> so but anyway, take us, take us through. Sure. So uh, as with rotorcraft, there's the main rotor up top. And then you have a tail rotor to counteract the, the torque of the main rotor when you apply power. <clears throat> the Talon is the newest version and has a shaft driven uh, from the power plant to the back. It's a shaft driven uh, two gearboxes in the front and back. So, okay. And the power plant is? Right behind, right here. And it's okay. a uh, horizontally opposed uh, four cylinder about... Uh, <clears throat> I forgot how many liters, like 2.6. Wait, okay. it's probably more than that. But um, and it's this one in particular is the turbocharged version, which helps you uh, turbos right under here. It helps uh, compensate for altitude and it gives you um, 10, 20 more horsepower and uh, gives you about 130 pounds more payload. Sure. The the power plant you mentioned is the turbocharger. Yeah. The turbocharger it. Can you give like the horsepower, the the engine brand? Sure, it's about 168 horsepower. Okay. Um, I think they're being conservative. I think there's a little bit more to it, but <clears throat> the engine comes out of uh, the block is from a Volkswagen Beetle, oh. but uh, water cooled and, or Porsches. Um, but uh, Rotoway has done extensive modifications and customization for the for the engine. Okay, awesome. Now it obviously being an experimental, you can a builder can choose whatever yeah. engine and is that the one that rotorcraft that this this is built around or you just chose the vw um this is what engine. came with the uh helicopter and it's been like that for you know the last 40 years some guys will put a jet in in, in there but um that uh, requires a lot more technicality and skill to do okay um, awesome so we have the rotor blades here this is the vertical stabilizer so in flight this keeps the tail weather vane behind you in fact the counter torque not even needed in flight. Okay. Um, not very much. <clears throat> and then you have horizontal stabilizers, which keep the uh, tail facing back as well. I don't think I've seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is this is neat. Uh, I actually noticed you didn't paint this, not right? Yet. I actually think it looks. I was just gonna say, I, it looks really cool. Yeah. You know, just it being like that, I think it meshes well. Some builders will with, leave it and polish it up. It's nice, yeah. but uh, I probably will paint it eventually. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> this thing's kind of interesting. This is where the uh, um, counter ballast, uh, the ballast goes. So when you have um, two uh, two people, uh, you have a passenger. You put the weight up back here. Oh. When you're solo, the weight goes up front. You'll see way in the front right skid down there. Interesting. So, I didn't know. For your CG, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, and you got the swash plate, and um, if you want, we can even pull out the panels at some point and show you if you like. That would be neat. Um, <clears throat> pilot and command sits uh, in the left seat. Okay. So take us, take us to the interior. Okay. Let's... So, the Talon actually has a nicely upgraded seats with some you know, sidebar support, and uh, it's it's actually quite nice. Earlier ones doesn't have that, but um, so what you got is the cyclic, which controls the main rotor blade tilting forward, back, left, and right. Okay. This is cyclic, and then you have the directionals, which control the the yaw of the ship, which go left and right, and all these controls are mechanically linked. So you you notice my cyclic, uh, cyclic is. It's linked like that, so um, two people can actually operate the ship. Okay. And lastly, you have this. This is the collective. I've removed the passenger one. It's you can remove it if you like, um, but this actually increases and decreases the pitch of the main blades. So oh wait. That, that 
So that sort of controls up there. Yeah, it goes from negative two degrees to positive nine and a half or 10 degrees. Cool, you mentioned earlier about an auto- Rotation. Auto rotation, Are you? Yes. can you explain that? Sure, absolutely. What that is. So all helicopters have the uh, capability of auto rotating, which is uh, the condition where you land the ship without any engine power using the residual energy in the main rotor blades. Okay. So in fact, you can't even get your license until you demonstrate that you can do one. Cool. I don't know if the examiner sits with you. I think he does, but you know. <laughs> okay, but can you kind of paint a picture of what that is? So you're, say, you're you're flying, you lose an engine, sure. and let's just assume you're closer to somewhere to land, Yes. Uh, which is a good thing. Yeah. So how, walk us through the process. Sure, sure. So uh, um, what happens is, uh, let's just talk about a drill. Uh, you're flying along, level, straight level flight, going 70 miles an hour, or whatever speed. <clears throat> what you do is, the engine stops. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it runs down. There's a one-way gear, so if the engine stops, the main rotor will continue to, it's a one-way gear. Okay. We call it a uh, spread clutch. And within two seconds, you're flying here, you've got to drop the collective past the zero degree to negative two. So all of a sudden, you know, when it's positive, the engine's driving it, pro providing lift. Uh-huh. Um, when you lose engine, you drop it to negative two. And then as you fall to the, begin to descend, the air, instead of flowing from up to down, it's flowing down to up like that. So it actually will maintain the main rotor blades and even uh, increase the RPM. You know, if you don't watch it, you can overspeed it. Cool. So you just get the RPM at a steady state and you begin to descend at about uh, 1,300, 1,500 uh, feet per minute, going about 70 miles per hour. And then you pick, as you're in that steady state, you pick a spot to land, um, level, no wires, and uh, 50 by 50, about the size. <clears throat> the higher you are, the more time you have to decide where. And, uh, and then about 40 feet uh, above the ground, just above the treetops, you begin to uh, pull back on the cyclic to, to flare the ship. Okay. And what that does is um, it uh, slows the descent and it also slows the airspeed down. So you, in a sense, you're coming down at 70 and then you flare at 40 feet and you begin to slow down. And then about 20 feet, um, you, uh, you're, your forward air speed begins to bleed to zero, and you're you're coming down to the ground much slower. Okay. And then you use the last bit of collective, the energy stored in the rotor system, to cushion your uh, um, landing right there. Awesome. You pull it, and then and uh, you have to demonstrate this over and over again before you get your license. Perfect. So these are the two seats. The pilot sits here, and the passenger sits here. And uh, <clears throat> um, you've got your uh, uh, console here with all your instruments. And uh, I have a uh, four flight running here for uh, traffic monitoring, whatnot. Um, so uh, this ship weighs empty without fuel about a thousand pounds. And the max gross weight is uh, 1500 without the turbo and 1630 with the turbo. So, um, of course, mine is a turbo, so I have a little bit more capacity. Um, and the talons come standard with glass, which is quite amazing for an experimental craft. Um, another thing that is unprecedented is the FADEC system. It has dual redundant engine control. And uh, in, in fact, part of every startup, you've got to cycle the engine uh, control so that uh, <clears throat> you test each one individually. Cool. Now that we're up here, yeah, you know, talk to us about what's what, what are these for? Okay, so you've got your uh, two engine ECUs, one and two here. Um, we'll flip that on and start up, and then this is the ignition. There's separate ignitions, um, and then you have uh, two fuel pumps. So there's there's actually eight spark plugs in here, and then there's two fuel pumps, and we cycle and test through all of that. Um, the instrument panels here and the avionics here. <clears throat> Um, I actually have a second battery that uh, is a lithium battery for doing the starter, and this will uh, bridge the two if needed. Okay, yeah. cool. You mentioned ADSB earlier. Yes. So, 
talk to us about that. What you so, got? So, I am. This ship is 2020 compliant. Um, I've installed AD, ADSB in there, and it's actually controlled by the glass in here. So once I flip the avionics on, I can show you the ADSB is, is okay. there. And this serves. Oh, this this is ADSB in. Okay. Um, we have ADSB out, so other people know where we are. And this is. This will pick up the traffic and send it to my iPad here and show all the traffic. The build time, um, the factory estimates 500 hours. There's people who can knock it out in like 300. They're, I mean, they've built multiple ones, but for me it was about 500 hours, uh, which is about, you know, if you put put some work in every day, it's about a year's work, uh, which is pretty incredible as far as <laughs> a kit helicopter. But um, they do all the critical welding I didn't have to do any welding. I had to do some leveling and drilling and all that stuff. Uh, I just follow directions. It's like a giant constructor set. Uh, you do need some kind of uh, know-how as far as building stuff. And some people learn it as they as they go. And as long as you get some help, and you can do it. Uh, in the country, there's probably about half a dozen guys who are I would consider experts with Rotaway. Um, one guy did the videos for Rotaway, and that's the guy I'm uh, doing flight training with. One of the guys. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, how much for a builder who may be interested in this, uh, talk to us about the cost for the kit mm -hmm. and then costs to complete as you have yours. Mm -hmm. And then also kind of like the, the process of... Like what's the wait time, or what was your yeah. wait time whenever you? <clears throat> so I, when I put my order in, I think I got everything in about eight months. Took a little time, and uh, but I got it all in eight crates. It's it's quite an experience getting the whole helicopter in, in, in crates. But um, um, cost wise, uh, the kit right now runs about 160 with a turbo option. Um, it used to be uh, under a hundred and uh, there's been you know different acquisitions going on with the factory or whatnot um, but they're, they're 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 always adjusting you know so um, when my grandpa first looked into it uh, 40 years ago it was 21,000 which is today's equivalent of about 65 so the ship has always been about under six figures so only recently did they, you know, they must have added a lot of, you know, the glass and whatever, a lot of things to it to, to beef okay. it up. One thing I wanted to say was like, this is definitely the best iteration uh, Rotaway has put out. Some people say this performs better than R22, which doesn't say much, but for experimental, it's not bad. But um, with the amount of excess power that you have and the refinement, um, it's really the best yet, you know, with the glass and um, <clears throat> so it's a good time to get a get a roadaway talent.